Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2 and I'm coming to you tonight with another upcoming projects video and I have a rifle on the table that I'm really excited to get the opportunity to shoot because you guys know I'm a huge Colt fan. I just always found something fascinating about the history of Colt and the firearms that they have manufactured throughout the years and their I guess military heritage and provenance and how their company is just intertwined with the history of America. And I've always liked that. And this rifle that's on the table, I think is the rifle that Colt was hoping the US military was going to adopt when they were looking at the SIG, which of course they did or they ended up adopting the SIG spear, and that's what they are going to and of course they're changing the caliber away from 556 but colt tried to redesign the m4 and this is going to be an m5 rifle and it's still direct impingement i believe but it has a lot of upgrades and i've been interested in this but i haven't really wanted to spend the money on it because it's a lot more expensive than their standard m4 line in the 6920s and so forth so I've been kind of wondering, is it worth it? The rifle looks very attractive, but I wasn't sure if it was worth the money. And now I'm going to get the opportunity to review it. And this rifle is on loan to the channel from somebody new. And this person is a really cool guy. His name is Raul. He's a police officer here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And he originally contacted me, I think through email, and we were talking about Colts and rifles and the videos that I had made, like my Colt AR collection, which, by the way, is a video that I don't think I was able to save from my original channel when it got taken down. I don't think I saved it. So I need to remake that video. And because he thought that video was so cool, it's kind of made me put that on the list of the videos that I have to make soon. And so I'm going to do that for him. And uh, But he's a big Colt fan and loves their rifles. And so I went down to Dallas uh, to meet him, and we talked to guns for a while, and he lent this to the channel. And I promised him that I would try to get it done as fast as I can. So I'm really honored and humbled that people uh, like my content enough that they help me create it by lending me guns to review. So I wanted to show you this here and see what you guys think because as I said I'm really excited about it and this gun is kind of brand new in the box um, it's one of the early M5s I think that they released so it's not like uh, he hasn't had the opportunity to shoot it I guess he just hasn't done it it has the I guess cleaning kit the owner's manual the magazines a QD sling swivel a QD swing swivel uh, attachment point a sling in it and it's my understanding that the new M5s don't come with all of this. They just come with the owner's manual and the magazine. So Colt has kind of cheapened things, but you're still going to pay the same price. So there's that. And let me get the rifle out here. And it is still in the original packaging, in the original plastic wrap, unfired. So he's allowing me to take the first shots with this thing. So let me... Get all of this out of the way here. And then we'll talk about this really cool rifle. So, so here it is. I mean, it definitely looks like a standard AR rifle, maybe from a distance. We have this really nice M-Lock handguard out here, which interlocks with the upper receiver. So you can see how it kind of matches up there which I think is really cool. It is free floating. Looking at the barrel profile, it looks like it's a government profile. It's very thin here in the back, thicker out here in the front. And yeah, I'm looking at the gas tube. It is direct impingement. It has a uh, birdcage flash hider here on the front. Let me check out these sights. Um, I guess they're marked, uh, what are they, Troy Industries. So these are the Troy Industries iron sights here in the back and the front. It comes with a, a Radian Raptor charging handle, Magpul stock, a standard A2 grip. But, tell, but, but let's take a look here at this lower. And this is where I think things are 
kind of different and interesting. This is definitely a forged lower receiver. It's not billet. But as you can see, the fencing on it is different. So we have the place for the detent and the detent spring for the takedown pin. And you can see the fencing here around the mag button is different. The, um, I guess, kind of the shape around the trigger is different. It's a lot more jagged and hexagonal, I guess. And we can see the place where the pins go through the receiver is a little bit thicker. It's a raised area. And uh, Raul told me that they've redone the pins in this. Now, I have not opened this up to take a look at that fire control group. So I'm not really sure what they changed. But obviously, that was something that they wanted to upgrade for some reason. I uh, don't know if they were having problems with previous rifles. But yeah, so they just redesigned that. Um, we have ambi controls on this side. So you have your bolt catch, your mag catch, which I think is a huge upgrade, which you know, uh, most companies are going to now. But I love the fact we get all these ambi controls on a forged lower. Kind of reminds me of LMT. Uh, the upper receiver is a little bit different as well. It's also forged. We do have the, the uh, keyhole marked forging. But as you can see, the front of this upper receiver is different. This is definitely not mil spec and it's designed to go with this handguard and it mates up there pretty darn nice. You can see the Colt mark on the handguard. Yeah, so this is a very attractive rifle. I really like it. Um, so I really kind of have to, you know, take it down a little bit and open it up and see what parts are inside. But I'm going to assume it's going to be the Schmidt tool parts that pretty much they always use because it does have that uh, ambi control, the small ambi control, that is definitely a Schmidt tool part. And yeah, another thing about this rifle that maybe I'm not the biggest fan of, but I guess it being a more modern rifle I can accept is that Colt no longer uses roll marks, they use laser engraving. So the uh, Rampant Pony up here where it says Colt M5 and the serial number, it's all laser engraved. And for me, that looks a little bit cheap. The roll marks, which are deeper, look a lot more professional. And although it doesn't change the quality of the gun, I think it's really important to have deep roll marks on a gun. It just looks better. And as I always say in my reviews, perception is reality. So if you have a gun that looks cheap or has cheap markings, it makes you feel like the gun is cheap. And... I kind of feel like the markings on this are a little bit cheap. They're just laser engraved. They're not very deep. They are crisp. They are clean. And they look good. It's just not the same as a roll mark. And I kind of wish that they would have kept that. But I understand this is probably quicker to do. It's cheaper to do. And they can just punch it into a computer. And they can just pump out these things. And the laser engraver can do all the lower receivers in like one run. And change the numbers and all that with no problem. But... Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting interesting uh, rifle to review because obviously it seems like it's so familiar, like a 6920 or an M4, but it has a few upgrades. So I really do need to take it apart and see if they've changed anything else inside. But it appears from just, you know, pulling the charging handle back, it looks like we have a typical barrel extension. The bolt and the carrier look the same. We have a forward assist. So, yeah, this is really uh, cool. So I am humbled and uh, honored beyond words that I get to shoot this as well. So I have a couple of ARs that I'm going to be taking to the range maybe tomorrow. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to take the um, um, Midwest Industries Air Crew Service Weapon, the uh, GAU-5, is it the a1 i forgot i forgot the exact the exact designations the takedown survival uh, rifle so i'll be doing that one as well so it'll be kind of like an ar day at at the range so yeah I'm, I'm really excited about this because looking at it i can tell you from handling it here i definitely want one i definitely want one this is a really cool upgrade from the originals and I can understand why the military may have wanted to go with the SIGs, but I really think that Colt did a nice job. And I think the fact that they trademarked M5 is why the military can't call their rifle, their new rifle, the M5. I think it's actually the, what, the M7? But 
Yeah, so I think they actually trademarked that. And I think one of the reasons that they trademarked that is originally they wanted to trademark the M4, but I think the military had been using that one before Colt trademarked it, so they couldn't get the trademark on it. They own the rights to the name or the, uh, I guess, yes, I guess the rifle, uh, the trademark of AR-15. Only Colt can make AR-15s. Other rifle or other rifle companies can only make AR-15 style guns because they own the name AR-15. They don't own the name M16, but they own the name AR-15. So uh, I'm not an attorney, so I don't understand how all of that works, especially when the government uses those names, but that's my understanding. But I think they did trademark this before coming out with the rifle so nobody could steal it from them. So the M5. Yeah, so pretty darn cool rifle, and I'm really excited to get this thing to the range and shoot it because I want to know what this thing is all about. Yeah, it feels pretty well balanced. It feels light for what it is. Uh, I like this handguard, so I'm hoping that it doesn't get too hot. It's kind of thin, and I've discovered that with prolonged use, these thinner handguards that are closer to the barrel sometimes heat up, especially towards the gas block. And I also think he mentioned, and i got to double-check this, but looking at this, I do believe this is a mid-length gas system. So if it was a carbine, it'd be out to here. And if it was a, pi a pistol, it'd be about here. But it's right here in the middle. And a lot of people think that the mid-length gas system is better because it gives you more dwell time. Which, I know many of you guys know what dwell time is. But if you don't know, it's the time from the point when the projectile passes the gas block, but yet hasn't exited the barrel it allows the gases to build up which will of course push the carrier back if you don't have enough dwell time it makes the timing of all that trickier and you have to open up the gas port a little bit more to make it run and that cannot lead to reliability so the mid-length gas system i think is supposed to be more reliable so I'm excited about that and seeing how it runs. But this thing is brand new. I mean, it still has like the original factory oils on it. So uh, thank you, Raul, for giving me this opportunity. It's going to go to the range tomorrow. And I'll try to post some pictures of it maybe on Instagram. And, um, yeah, just try to get some footage of it. So this is absolutely awesome. So thank you so much. And right now as I'm filming this video, it is... Because it, I guess it was daylight savings time. Was it ended or started? I can't remember which one it is. Uh, I guess it's 11.20. My clock says 10.20 at night, but it's actually like 11.20 at night. So I'm kind of tired, but my body's saying that I shouldn't be because it's not that late. But I hate I hate daylight savings time and switching between, uh, between things. I know that recently the Senate unanimously, I know, Democrats and Republicans agreed on something, tried to pass a bill, and, and I guess it did pass out of the Senate, where they would eliminate daylight savings time or go to daylight savings time and stick to it which i don't understand why we don't cut it in half so for example like on the next time we change we're going to go back an hour in the fall why don't we just go back 30 minutes and just stay there that would make the most sense right you cut the time in half and just everybody be happy we, we got to get rid of this daylight savings time crap it's miserable i hate it especially the one in the spring so anyway, that's uh, what's going on tonight. A upcoming projects video on a really cool rifle. So I'll try to report back to you after I shoot this and that Midwest Industries AR. So I guess let me know if you guys have any questions and if you guys know anything about the M5 that I should know about that maybe I neglected to talk about or anything you would like to see about it or see on it, let me know. And if you own one, let me know your thoughts. So there you go. So that's all I got for you tonight. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday evening, which it's now going to be pretty much Monday morning by the time this probably gets uploaded. Uh, so anyway, hope you guys are doing well. And if you watch to the end of the video, what's the word of the day? What's the word of the day? Uh, Colt. Colt is the word of the day because that is what Raul and I bonded over today. Colt rifles and Colt guns. And the heritage of my channel, where I originally started off as the Fort Worth Colt guy. So Colt is the word of the day. If you made it to the end, use that word in the comment. And I know you're a true vault dweller and made it to the end. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. 
And as always, thanks for watching.